Hello everybody, today I'm going to present the solutions of the Adcoder Beginner Contest 161, the contest I ju have just finished. So, for problem A, we basically only have to implement what the statement say, says. Namely, we have to do the two swaps and print the number, as you can see in my source code. Here I'm reading the input, swapping the numbers as requested and printing a b and c yes it can be it can turn out it turns out that the form is fixed but in order to show a more detailed implementation i did the swaps now for the problem b again just like with problem a we only have to implement what the statement says and be careful at how do we check the given property Basically, we need to find the sum of the numbers, and then instead of dividing the sum uh, at the 4m and check if it's smaller than vi, we should use the product method and do the reverse part. And we only have to check if the count is bigger than m and print yes or no. Now let's move on to c. So given x we have to replace x with the absolute difference of x and k and we need to find the minimum possible value of n after doing the operation basically if n is bigger than k we are always going to drop from n k just like we are doing in gcd so basically we need to drop k from n until n is smaller than k and when n is smaller than k, we have two cases. Either n is equal to n modulo k, or n is equal to k minus n modulo k. And the implementation here is going to show what I did. Basically, we are uh, finding the remainder of n at m, and then print the minimum between n and m minus n. The only thing one should be careful when it comes to solving this problem is that the input is long long and we need to use long long data type now let's move on to problem d this is by far the most interesting problem in this contest in my opinion and i'm going to explain why even though the definition of the number isn't too interesting or too special the way we are going to use to solve this problem is quite uh, unusual for an outcoder contest and it is also not too intuitive. Basically, we are given a k and we need to find the k smallest loon number. Basically, from the last sample, it turns out that it is not enough to basically check the property for, for each number until we found k numbers because it will give us time limit exceeded since the number here is around 3.2 billion so we need to find a more clever method by looking at the definition of the digit for each pair of two digits at, next to each other the absolute difference should be at most one so we can think it as a problem with various states for d if we are a, a digit i the value of the digit is i the next digit can be either i minus 1 i or i plus 1 so basically the number of loon loon numbers of length x which is equal to the number of digits is about 3 raised to the number of digits it is actually a bit less but for us it's not really important the exact value but it's more important to view the approach behind this problem. Since the biggest number required is about 3.2 billion, the number of digits is 10. So we can basically write a brute force algorithm, which is quite interesting, I'd say. Basically, we can run the backtracking program, and we are going to keep uh, the values found in a set and we must avoid 
uh, going through the same value twice because it will lead us to time limit exceeded due to too many states. The maximum number I put here is 400 million. It is a quite rough approximation, but it is a nice one since it won't lead us to missing number. If x is equal to 0, we can initialize all the digits from 1 to 9. Remember that we are asked to find the positive Lunar number. Also, if x isn't 0, we must find the value of the last digit and check each of the three possible next states, as you can see here. If last is bigger than 0, we can go to the inferior digit. We can always go to the digit equal to the previous digit, and we can go to the digit bigger than the last digit only if last is different than 9. Last but not least, we will run we will find the smallest number from the set which can be done in many languages here i implement this problem in c++ and when we ended this we are just going to print the number resulted same with the previous number we need long long because the biggest number is 3 billion and this number is bigger than int max now let's move on to the problem E. Problem E is probably the hardest one in my opinion. And it is it can basically resume, be resumed like that. We are basically given a string and an integer and we need to find the days Takanashi must work no matter which schedule he will choose. Basically, we can Think this problem like a DP problem, as you can see in the beginning of my implementation, where DP of i is 1 plus maximum value or the minimum of n plus 1 and i plus c plus 1. The maximum array is basically a suffix maximum, as you can see here. Max of i is maximum between DP of i and max of i plus 1. And the p of i, if the string here isn't equal to o, will be always equal to max of i plus 1. Now, after we computed the dp value, we must think it like that. How many positions can we visit at the stage x of our journey? For the first stage, we can visit all the states, all the states where s i is equal to o and d p of i is at least equal to k. That's what I'm doing at the beginning, since last is equal to 1, and where I'm basically checking if s i is equal to o and d p of i is equal, bigger or equal to max r, which is basically the minimum value we can still uh, go. And in order to avoid using n squared operations, I checked here if I should stop and go right from the place where I stopped. If at some step we are left with just one element, we should print it because no matter which path we are going to take, we must use this position. And if we also have a number on the path, and we will always have since in the problem statement it is guaranteed that we have at least one path. The last is maximum between last and v0 plus c plus 1. Why this? Because if he works on some day, he must stop working for the next c days. And because uh, some values won't be accessible at the next step, like for example, at step two, the values which can, can be visited only at step one. Like in the first sample, we can't visit one and two at the second stage, but we can visit six at the second stage. We are going to remove uh, the values which don't uh, match our criteria, like can't be visited in a subsequent stage. And in order to implement this easily, I chose to use a deck queue, 
which is basically a stack combined with a queue. This can also be done with a manual array, but in order to get the problem faster, I chose to use a DQ. This problem was also, was for me the most annoying to solve because I spent quite some time thinking at a reasonable way to implement it. And I also got a wrong answer, which gave me some more head age. Now let's move on to the last problem. Problem F as it is usual for division three rounds on code forces and for ad coder beginner contests. It is a classical task. Basically, in this task, we are going to, we must find the number uh, such that if we drop k or divide the number by k, uh, and we get one. Based on the operation stated here, we can find the following two conclusions. If n doesn't divide k, by using the second part of the operation, n is equal to n minus k, n will never divide k. And the only numbers which don't divide n and will be equal to 1 are the numbers such that a reminder of n at k is 1. Basically, the divisors of n minus 1, which are not the divisors of n. This is a very important observation which will make us avoid overcount stuff. However, if k divides n, we must run the algorithm to see what happens. I think I... And basically, the answers can be either divisors of n or divisors of n minus 1. And we are going to check all of them. Here, I'm going to check the divisors of n. If n divides i, I'm going to check the property for i and insert in some set i. And I'm also going to check n divided by i in case i isn't equal to n divided by i. How to do the checking? Basically, we need to divide n by the number until we can, we can no longer do this. And we need to check out if uh, the number Rem the number's reminder at the divisor is 1. Why this? Because we can use the same uh, observation we will use for the numbers dividing n minus 1. Now, all we are left to do is finding the divisors of n minus 1 and checking if some of them were also divisors of n in order to avoid counting the same number twice. Basically, that's why we are using the set here in order to check the property. The division algorithm is similar to the one used for the number n, except we are dropping one from n. And only thing we have to do is to print the answer. The algorithm will run in about o square root of n multiplied by logarithm of n. If you liked watching this video, please check out my other videos I posted in the description. And if you also subscribe to the channel, press to the bell button and see you soon. Bye.